This video is sponsored by Y Food. And to start things off, we have a little issue with the Golf R. Amateur cold star, amateur. <laughs> now on the last video on the Golf, we fitted bigger alloys, 19 inch alloys, and it already had coilovers fitted to the car. I fitted them in the video before that video, and I thought it fitted perfect, it looked perfect, but after a while, it's been doing this. Now what that noise is, is this tyre scrubbing along the inner arch there. It's doing it both sides, although the fitment looks absolutely spot on and perfect. As it goes down the bumps, it's just scrubbing the edge of the tyre, which isn't ideal. Good thing about the BC Racing coil levers, we can adjust the camber of the wheels in and out, and we can adjust the height. What I'm going to do now is just adjust the height a tiny bit to see if it fixes it. Okay, that seems, well, it looks like it could have done the job. We now have got a little arch gap and a little room for the wheel. What about this side? Yes, possibly just about the same. And it still doesn't bring away the stance of the car. It still looks quite nice, but hopefully that will stop the rubbing of the wheel on the arch. If it doesn't, we're probably going to have to bring the camber in a tiny bit. But we've still got perfect fitment on that. So, the next problem with the Golf R. I want to get the Golf R as quick, if not quicker, than the Lamborghini Gallardo. At the minute, the Golf R is stage one tuned at around 370 bhp, and the Lamborghini Gallardo is about 550 bhp. But also bearing in mind that this car was £85,000 and this one was around £15,000. So if that one beat that one, it would be an incredible embarrassment for me. We have got a hell of a lot more modifications to do to the Golf to get it up to that Lamborghini standard. And that's exactly where we're going today. Let's go. Let's take a wire food for the road. Oh my God, looking at my squad. Maybe I can go cheap, like I'm a rookie. And we have came to awesome GTR. So awesome GTI, up here in Manchester, a massive Volkswagen Audi parts dealership and tuning specialist. And they have been watching the golf build and they've agreed to help us guys out, help us get this golf as quick as the Lamborghini. But right now we are stage one tuned. We've hit the limit. There's no further. We can push this car without getting parts and that is why we're here. So it's time to go shopping. Induction kit. For stage two, we need an induction kit. We need more air to, well, go into the engine, which will create, obviously, more power. These are also parts of the induction kit. Downpipe. With more air going into the engine, we need to be able to release it out of the engine quicker. That's why we've got a Scorpion downpipe. And finally, an intercooler. With more air and more power becomes more heat, which is why we need an intercooler to, well, cool it all down. <laughs> all in nicely. So yes, once again, we have to do a shout out to Awesome GTR. Make sure you go and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Show how powerful we are to them. Let's go get them to 10,000 subscribers. Go do it, go to subscribe. It only takes two seconds. Now, before we start jumping ahead to stage two with the Golf R, we've got some unfinished business with stage one on the Golf R. But before we start that unfinished business, we have to say a massive thank you for Y Food for not only keeping me going during these days where we're out and about, but also for sponsoring this video. They are a meal replacement drink. They're not a protein shake. They're not a diet drink. They're simply a meal replacement. But Matt, what's that you have in your hand? I'm used to seeing these types of shakes. Well, Matt, I'm glad you asked because these are the new taster sachets for the powder drink. Now, you're still going to get the vitamins and minerals you will get in a milkshake drink, but this time in a powder. In the taster pack there is 12 meals with six different flavors. Smooth vanilla, alpine chocolate,
chocolate, coffee, happy banana, crazy coconut, and fresh berry. So one sachet is one drink, and one drink is one meal. You fill your sachet up to the line on this beaker and fill the rest with water, and it tastes absolutely incredible. And the best part about it, you don't have to feel bad about drinking something which tastes so good because it is really good for you. So to grab a wife food taster pack today, click the link in the description box below, and with help from this little banner here, you're gonna save yourself a nice bit of money with my discount code. Trust me, if you're on the go like me, these are so perfect for you. Right, we've got unfinished business. So, we have dyno figures for the stage one tube, but no real road figures. So, it'd be interesting to see what this does 0 to 60 timing. Okay, so according to a quick Google search, we can do 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. That is stock. We have a stage one tune, but obviously Volkswagen would have done this in the most perfect conditions possible to get that figure. We just have a private road in Leicester. The Golf did 0 to 60 in 3.79 seconds. Love that. Okay, scrap that. Round two, we did it in 3.64 seconds. <laughs> okay, so there's only one way now to increase the Golf's power. That is with stage two. We can't do stage two without these. Let's get fitting on. So the induction kit that I've gone for is the Racing Line induction kit. Now, it shouldn't be too difficult to fit, but we're about to find out. First, we're going to move the old original plastic hose, then all the air intake and the standard air box. Now, there's a plastic pipe which connects to the turbo, then to the induction kit. The standard one's quite restrictive, so we've replaced it with the Racing Line Turbo Elbow. Then the Racing Line Silicon Hose will go in place of the plastic one. This is a lot smoother on the inside, so it will aid that airflow. And finally, the foam filter, which is a lot bigger than the standard air filter. Pop all the covers back on, and to top it off, a nice spray with this silly shine. Link is in the description. And it looks ace. Okay, induction kit on. Next up, intercooler. Oh my days, that is huge. <laughs> So the intercooler, as you're about to see, takes a lot longer to fit. The grille has to come off, the bumper has to come off, so we can access the intercooler at the front of the car. Once the bumper's off, the headlights have to come out as well. Then disconnecting all the electrical connectors from the car to the radiator pack. There's two hoses connected to the intercooler at the bottom, which had to be disconnected. Then I can start removing the crash bar at the front. Once the crash bar was removed, the only thing stopping me getting to the intercooler now was the air conditioning condenser, which wasn't too difficult to take off. I can feel it coming, you on my radio. Then we can finally remove the stock intercooler. As you can see, the new Racing Line one is a lot bigger and thicker than the standard one, which should help a lot with the air intake temperatures. Then all that was left to do was put the whole thing back together. Now, as you're watching me pop this back together, I would massively appreciate it if you guys are not subscribed to click that subscribe button down below. It is completely free and it really supports the channel. If you're already subscribed, massive respect to you guys. And also back in stock on my website is the MA 37 piece toolkit. The new guys may not know exactly what this is, but it's basically my way of getting new people out there on the tools, on their cars, and it's a great place to start. The MA 37 piece toolkit, the link is in the description. Okay, intercooler on. Next step, downpipe. Come on. Here we go. This is where it's gonna get real. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. Kind of. 
So the downpipe that I've gone for is a Scorpion downpipe. It's three inches, so it's much wider than the standard downpipe. This was actually so painful and long-winded to remove. There was barely any room to work at the back of the engine. Once I disconnected the downpipe at the back of the engine and removed it from the rest of the exhaust, I realized there's not enough room to slide it down the back, so I had to loosen the subframe off, the engine mounts, and even disconnect the prop shaft from the gearbox. This gave me just enough room to wiggle it and get it out, but it definitely wasn't easy. And here you can see the comparison of the stock downpipe to the Scorpion one. Now I had to call Hannah in to help me put this all back together because it was an absolute nightmare. With it being three inches, it was a lot wider, so a little bit difficult to slide up the back of the engine, but I'm sure all this hard work would be worth it in the end. and was finally getting to the final stages where I was tightening it back onto the original exhaust and Hannah was tightening up the exhaust mounts. If you want a terrible idea or something to do which is terrible, fit a downpipe to a Golf R. Now the wheel is sitting a lot straighter in the arch as well because we moved the subframe forward. That was probably the fix for the wheel. If you didn't see that video where we had that problem, click in the top right hand corner. But now everything is on. We've got the intercooler, we've got the induction kit, we've got the um, turbo elbow and the downpipe as well. Everything ready for stage two. Now I'm interested to see whether it sounds any different with that downpipe with the stock exhaust. Obviously we will be getting exhaust at some point but we've got to save the pennies. Right, let's start it up and see if it sounds any different and hopefully I've not broken anything. We seem to be doing okay here. Everything's running over and ticking over fine. So far, let's let it warm up and see if the exhaust sounds any different. Okay, golf's warm. We should get some nice induction sound and we should get, well, a nicer sounding exhaust. Possibly, I don't know. Let's listen. First, induction sound. Definitely sounds better. Next stop, exhaust. That is sounding so much better. It is a little bit tinny, but it is starting to do those little crackles and pops. It's gonna sound so good under load. The Lamborghini, she is shivering in her boots already. I know she's getting a little bit scared of the Golf R. Now it's all good installing those modifications, but it's no good unless the car knows it's got those additional modifications to it. So we need the stage two tune now. So again, guys, I'm really sorry, but we're gonna have to leave it for the next video where we'll be heading to Malibu Performance for a stage two tune and see what we'll be pushing out of this Golf R. So again, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>